Hello, thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to talk about how to turn an ordinary digital camera into a hyperspectral camera using deep learning. And by that, I mean a deep convolutional neural network. I have made a video similar to this one, but in that video, I use Sedu Inverse. But uh, I'd like to use a deep learning based approach or a deep convolutional neural network and see what happens when I use that. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to become more accurate, but let's see what happens. Let's get started. As I said in this video, I want to talk about how to turn an ordinary digital camera into a hyperspectral camera using deep learning. We have talked about this topic uh, in one of the prior videos, but we used a classic method. Uh, first, uh, let's remind ourselves of what we mean by turning a, a ordinary digital camera into a hyperspectral camera. How can we turn an ordinary camera into a hyperspectral camera? Hyperspectral cameras are capable of capturing the spectral reflectance information of the objects in a way that the camera captures an image, but the image contains the spectral reflectance information for each pixel or point in the image. The spectral reflectance could be very useful, especially in identifying the type of the material or object we are looking at. Hyperspectral cameras are usually very expensive and not everyone could afford to buy them. Here's an example of an image captured, uh, captured by hyperspectral camera as opposed to an ordinary digital camera. As you can see from the figure, we have uh, only th three channels in an ordinary digital camera, but we have a lot more than that when it comes to a hyperspectral camera. This is the hyperspectral camera and this is the ordinary digital camera. And this is an example of hyperspectral camera. But how can we turn a, a ordinary digital camera into a hyperspectral camera using a, a deep convolutional neural network? Opposite to the former video herein, we don't go too deep into how we can turn an ordinary digital camera into a hyperspectral camera. In order to do that, we get help from deep learning. We first build a deep convolutional neural network and then try uh, training it on two separate sets of images, hyperspectral images and RGB images, in a way that the CNN learns to go from the RGB image to the hyperspectral image. After training the CNN, it is then used to estimate the hyperspectral image of any RGB image that is applied to it. This is, the, this is how, in a nutshell, this uh, work is going to make a deep learning learn to go from RGB image to a hyperspectral image. And this is the architecture of a network. We're going to use a deep convolutional neural network that we're using, trying to go from RGB image to a hyperspectral image. As you can see, here are the sets of the hyperspectral images and the corresponding RGB images. The, these RGB images are actually sRGB images, but sRGB images is also a kind of RGB. In other words, they are the standard RGB. So these folders uh, contain the hyperspectral image and the corresponding sRGB image. As you can see, the images are actually bands of hyperspectral imaging system from 400 to 700 na nanometer at an interval of 10 nanometer. And so when you go from 400 na nanometer to 700 at a 10 nanometer interval, you're going to have 31 bands and these are the 31 bands. Before we go any further, uh, there are two points worth mentioning. The first one is we made the a, RGB images ourselves using the hyperspectral images and the standard formula to turning uh, reflectance spectra into sRGB image. Also, as you can see, the hyperspectral images are band by band, as you guys saw, and each band has its own image. 
but that will make the work of CNN hard to read the images. So we have to con concatenate the bands with each other to make a cube of hyperspectral image and then use them to feed them into the network. So I don't want to have band by band. I want to uh, get, uh, get those bands into one image and that will be hyperspectral cube image of that data. Now let's have a look at how we can take care of these uh, two point A and B. It should be noted that we used MATLAB to process the images, but we used Python to run the network. Let's go first to MATLAB to see how these two points are taken care of. Here's the script that I used to process the hyperspectral images. Uh, the first thing I did, because when you read the images uh, from uh, yeah, from MATLAB using UI get dear, uh, the images are not going to be in natural order. So in order to do that, I save the name of the images into this untitled 2. Let me open up this untitled 2 here. And these are the name of the images. And if you can see, they're not in natural order. Because that's how get dear get the images. So I had to save them in a separate f f file first. And then I uh, sort them in a natural way, and uh, and then I went through because I want to go one, two, three, four, five. But this one would go one, ten, eleven. So to go one, two, three, four, five, six, that that is the natural order. So I had to use not sort files, uh, which is a new built-in function in MATLAB. So after that, I would just go through the hyperspectral images and I would concat concatenate them with each other. And whenever I get to 31, that means the last image that should be added to this con concatenation. So I would add that image and I would save it and I would also change the hyperspectral image into a corresponding sRGB image and I would save it to use later on. And this is the whole script, very simple but very important points uh, inside it. When you use UI get dear, the natural order is not the way you expect it. So you have to change it into a natural order that you want using this built-in function. And then you would just go through the bands one by one, concatenate them, and also uh, make an sRGB image out of the concatenated hyperspectral images. And the concatenated hyperspectral images are also saved so that, I, so that the network would use it more easily. So here is the coding part of the convolutional neural network that I have written. First I import the, uh, the necessary functions that I use and then uh, I start reading the images from the sRGB image folder and this is the, f this is the path to that folder and uh, the, con the contents of the folder are going to be put into this file and I put them into natural order. Uh, I sort them in, in a natural order because I, I want them to be 1, 2, 3, 4, not uh, 1, 10, 11. So that's how I, I, I've I done it here. And then I start reading the images uh, that are into this uh, folder and I append them uh, with each other and I save them into the images one uh, variable. And after that I go start reading uh, uh, hyperspectral images which are saved as uh, mat format, which is saved in mat format, uh, mat file. Uh, the reason is, as I said, uh, the, the images of hyperspectral images are band by band, but I don't want them to be band. I want it to be a cube of hyperspectral image. So I save them into a mat file after making them into a cube of hyperspectral image. And the same thing here, I go through them and I naturally order uh, and I naturally sort them and save them into images 2. Uh, the, the images 1 that contains the sRGB image are going to be put in X and images 2 that contains hyperspectral image they are put in Y. And this is the architecture of the convolutional neural network. The first layer has only three channels resembling the RGB channel and this last layer has 31 channels resembling the 31 uh, value of spectral reflectance data at 31 wavelengths. And uh, as you can see, this network is a deep convolutional neural network. The number of filters increases and then it, it goes down and it
gets to 31 and I have 3 stride 2 which would down sample and I have 3 up sample which would up sample the image back to the original size and after that I compile the the network with up optimizer RMS prop and last function of MSE and then I fit the image fit X to Y X is the sRGB image and Y is the hyperspectral image right here and the batch size is 1 because I don't have too many training data and the number of epochs are 1000 the verbose is 0 which means I don't see the last value in every epoch I just see the last one and uh, I evaluate the, the network and after that I go and read the sRGB test image and I apply it to the train network using the uh, model predict and the output be here I reshape it to the original size and I save it as a reflectance reconstructed mat file and uh, yeah let's run the network and see uh, the the result. I've already run the network and I'm gonna just show the result to you guys uh, because it's a math file I'm gonna use MATLAB to display the output and I compare it uh, to the original uh, file. I'm just gonna render the this file into a, uh, into an sRGB image and compare it to the original sRGB. Let's see how it looks. So uh, let's first read the Rec reflectance reconstructed and let me run this is the this is a small script that I wrote to uh, render this sRGB image from a recovered reflectance and this is the result of the reflectance re recovered let's compare it to the original file this is the uh, recovered reflectance and this is the uh, original image and as you can see we've done a pretty good job uh, rendering the original image considering that we haven't spent time optimizing the network much and uh, yeah this is the rendered sRGB image from the reflectance or from the hyperspectral image that we have and compared to the original one and you can see it's 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 good it's it's at a very acceptable level Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and you were able to get something out of it. If you liked it, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and also share it. Share this video with your friends. And thank you so much and have a nice day.